time to talk about the Brawl Battle Box. But what is it and how does it work? Greetings owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles and welcome to my video on the Brawl Battle Box. It is a concept that I have come up with. I want to dabble in Brawl and rather than just use my existing collection because I have a whole bunch of stuff already that just feels too wide open to me. I wanted to have more like a limited experience with it. So I have crafted, and this is just a first stab at it because nobody's done anything like this as far as I know. I'm creating the Brawl Battle Box. What it is, I've got this case here to represent it. I got what I need inside here. So we'll crack into it. It's pretty simple. Any of you can emulate this if you want to give it a try. If you feel like you already have all kinds of stuff and you want to limit yourself down or just give yourself a creative point to start from. So the idea is really, really simple. The end goal is to build a brawl deck. If you don't know what that is, that's the 60 card singleton version of commander that uses standard cards. Basically, it's real simple. So we're going to be cracking standard boosters. I have six booster packs of Ixalan. I have six packs of Ammon Ket. I've got six packs of Hour of Devastation. I have six packs of Ixalan. And I have six packs of Dominaria. So the starting concept for the Brawl Battle Box, and I may change this as we go along, is to start with 30 booster packs. And the most key and the key piece to me is the Dominaria packs. I don't know if maybe this should be increased to a higher amount, but each of these packs guarantees you a legendary creature so you have someone to base the deck around, which is really important. So what we're going to do, because obviously to sit down here, build an entire deck and do all that in one video isn't going to be feasible. So this first round, this first video, the idea behind this is we're going to open up these booster packs. We're going to evaluate the legends that are available in here to choose as the main focus key card of our deck. And then what we'll do is actually work on building the deck at another point. So we're going to start out now by cracking these booster packs. And I'm going to just start getting into them now because there's 30 of them. So there's a fair number. Now, because the legendary creatures are only going to show up in the rare slots and things like that for everything but Dominaria, I'm not going to be going through all the packs. I'm going to leave everything else that's left over from the packs um, basically to go through and explore after I've decided on who will represent the deck. Oh, we're starting out with a legendary creature. Look at this. One of the options I have is Zatalpa Primal Dawn. Oh my God. Eight mana for a four eight flying double strike vigilance trample indestructible. That that tickles my fun bone right there. Oh yeah, tickle my fun bone Zatalpa. All right, well that's a nice start. I gotta say, not doing it in any particular order. I've just picked the five most recent sets from Standard because I felt like that was enough without going too far back for anybody who wanted to replicate this concept. All right, in this one, we've got Journey to Eternity. Legendaries, obviously, legendary enchantments don't count. So that's not going to be considered for our... Um, that's not going to be considered for our commander, for, the, uh, for our brawler brawler. All right, and we get another flip card. We got a Path of Metal. Oop, Path of Metal this time. All right, so we're not going to bother reading reading out what the cards that aren't candidates are because what we're doing right now is we're starting out the Brawl. Brawl seems like a fun concept. So, yeah, I mean, here we go. Let's see. What, what do we got? We got Tender Shoot Dryads. So nothing in this one here. All right, I'm not expecting to honestly to get too many options in terms of the commander from these other packs. They're just to give variety so that I have more singleton options to pick from because I intend to just try st to uh, to build from this to start out with. It's hilarious how having the camera, the camera's in a different position than normal and it's messing me up. Slaughter the strong. All right, there we go. All right, so we'll crack the last pack of Ixalan here. At least we got Zatalpa. I wasn't expecting that. That's nice. I expected all the legendaries actually to only really come from Dominaria. So that is a pleasant surprise. Oh, get out of here. Really? Two? Two Tender Shoot Dryads? And ah, man. Well, I hope I hope I end up playing green then. I mean, that, well, no, because it doesn't matter. You can't play doubles. I'm like, that'd be all right. It's like you're playing Brawl, dummy. I'm going to build for one one-on-one -on -one Brawl just for like casual kind of fun. I'm not looking to build a... A really like brutally efficient beat everybody deck I'm looking to just use a sealed pool and see what kind of an experience I can have so that was the Ixalan let's do I mean that was the rivals of Ixalan let's do Ixalan we'll do the whole Ixalan block all in one go first all right so in this pack we've got 
Verdant Sun's Avatar. No big deal there. Uh, 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 uh. I don't want to spend too long cracking these packs, so I'm not going to... I'm not going to sit here and go through a whole bunch of it. Let's see. We got a Priest of the Awakening Sun, so that is not useful. Well, I mean, it's useful if I end up playing dinosaurs, which... Actually, what am I talking about? If I play Zatalpa, what am I, an idiot? That's amazing with Zatalpa if I go Zatalpa. All right, never mind. I got to realize that... Hey, I got a Jace. This format lets you use legendary creatures and legendary planeswalkers too, doesn't it? I'll have to double check, but I'm pretty sure it does. So that makes Jace an option as well. All right. Not too shabby. So if if each set of six gives up one option, then Dominaria will kick in another six. That should give me 10, 10 or 11 options. Hopefully, if that turns out to be the way it breaks down. Repeating Barrage. It's like having a giant sealed pool in an event. It's kind of cool. You don't know what you're going to get. And it forces you to uh, to play differently. And also makes different things exciting that wouldn't be as exciting normally. Hey, we scored another legendary. And it's white. Maverin Fane, Dusk Apostle. One white, two colors for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever one or more non-token vampires you control attack, create a 1-1 one, one white vampire creature token with lifelink. Ah, oh, well, if you want to build vampire brawl tribal, that's a possibility. All right. Our options are opening up. So far, it's white-blue. We're leaning towards white-blue control, obviously. Well, only one or the other, since I can't have more than one uh, leading dude. So the final pack of Ixalan has kicked up a Sunbird's Invocation. All right. So far, a decently random mix of cards. Let's do... We're going to do Dominaria last, because that's going to have the exciting the exciting commander options. So let's see. We're doing Amonkhet now. First pack of Amonkhet. Hey! A legendary! Bam! Got Samet, Voice of Descent. Now we're opened up to red. I can play red-green if I want now. Well, that's a whole new basket of options. All right, next up, another pack of Amonkhet. Unsurprisingly, what are we going to get in you? Bum, bum, bum. And this is without even looking through the commons and uncommons. I'm going to save that to go through. Oh, hey. Oh, man, Anointed Procession. Guys, with Maverin Fane making vampire tokens, that is a solid addition. All right, if we go Maverin Fane, that's a good include. I can't help but peek at a couple of the uncommons, but I'm not uh, not really thinking about them. I'm not going to talk about them. We'll look at all that stuff and we figure out who's who's in charge here. Hey, we got another legendary creature. This time white blue. If we want to go full white blue, we can. We got Temet Vizier. He cares about tokens. So does Anointed Procession. Man, there's some nice synergy showing up here. All right, all right. Not too bad, man. Ammon Cat is kicking up some, some legendaries and some cards that will definitely work. And then we've got Sandworm Convergence. That's a fun card. Expensive, but fun. Don't have... A, oh, wait. No, that's right. Samet. I could play that with Samet. So I do, have a, I do have a commander option that will allow me to play that. So far, I have the option to play white, blue, white, blue, or red and green. And... We've got a Vizier of Many Faces. Bam. These Embalm guys would go pretty well with that uh, Temet that I got. Okay, so one pack of Amonkhet left to go. Let's see what we're going to get in here. Oh, yeah, man. This is exciting. I like this. I like actually cracking packs with a purpose. Like, it's like a puzzle. My brain is sorting out all these different options that I could end up... Um... Oh! Oh! I got another option. I got Bantu, the glorified legendary god. If I don't choose this... As my guy, I know that um, I saw my buddy Josh today at the store, and he's looking for Bantu. He specifically wants Bantu, and he got a box of Amiket. So if he doesn't get it, and I'm not playing with it, we'll see. I don't know, Josh. We'll have to see. Bantu is another option. Ah, oh, yeah. Very cool, man. Amiket delivered up three options. I was not expecting that. Let's see if Hour of Devastation can give us a nice another, nice another uh, sack tickle here with some goodness. What do you got? We got a ramming it up excavator. All right. All right. And second pack of Hour of Devastation. What's it going to be? Oh, what's it going to be? We are going to get a Hour of Devastation. All right. That's a solid card. I mean, obviously, it's not a, a choice for the commander for the deck, but that's all right. Got more options than we thought. I, than I, oh, yay! Oh, yay! Oh, Foil Scorpion God, are you kidding me? The options are piling up. And watch the options pile up. Man. Dude. Dude. 
Either either I can pick this as my commander or I can put it straight into my king cube. Either way, score! Yay! Oh man, that's awesome. This is great. This is going great, man. All right. Brawl Battle Box is awesome. Got Solemnity. Don't think that's going to make much of a difference for what I want to do, though. All right. Next pack of our. We're moving quick because that Solidarity was really disappointing after that Scorpion Gird. All right. We got a Mirage Mirror. There we go. That's That can fit into any deck and will be a solid include. That's a nice pull. All right, and last pack of Hour of Devastation before we get into the most exciting part, the Dominaria, where we got all the juicy legendaries waiting for us because there's going to be one in every single pack. All right, what do we got here? Hey! Hey! Must be the Nicobolis! God, Pharaoh! If you can use Planeswalkers, which I'm fairly certain you can, man, my options are really, really solid. God damn, I don't think I'm going to be able to narrow it down. More. I may have to actually even pick the guy I'm starting with. I'll try and narrow it down to some options, but god damn, they're making it hard for me. You're making it hard for me. <laughs> All right, let's go into Dominaria. Man, god damn, I thought these were going to be the most exciting packs, but what? What? Cracking like a bala. Dominaria pack number one. Let's do it. Why you always cracking? Hey, we got Slimefoot the Stowaway. What an awesome option. Booyah. All right, and for rares, I guess since we were talking about that as well, we got Lich's Mastery. All right. Okay. Wouldn't have been an exciting pack if I was just cracking and hoping it for value, but to get a legendary dude, boom. Not too shabby at all. Next up, we've got Grun. Sweet. I've got a Grun as an option. All right, and... The rare is a disappointing precognition field. Man, Dominaria. Come on, Dominaria. This is like, the other set surprised me and Dominaria's let me down. Don't do this to me, girl. Let me, let me, let me, come on. I'll give you a spanking. I know you like that. Come on, give me that goodness. I'll give you a little gentle, a little bit gentle. Come on now. All right, let's go. Let's get that goodness. Let's get that goodness. All right, so we got a Tiana Ships Caretaker. All right. Nice option, nice option. And the Miri Conjecture. Damn it, I even dropped it. Damn it, that's just disappointing. This is a dis. What dominaria you're letting me down? I hinged everything around you, and it looks like I might have been wrong. I was wrong to trust in you. Jaya, Jaya, you suck. I blame you, Jaya, fuck you. All right. One smack. Give me what I want. He's a woman hater. I got Traxos. I got another option. Colorless. I can pick one color aligned with it, but I really don't like Traxos, so I'm not going to be building a Traxos deck. Get lost, Traxos. God damn it, Dominaria. Come on, man. Come on. Give me that goodness. Get it. Give it to me now. Come on now. Don't hold out on me, girl. All right, what do we got? What do we got? We got Raph Capuchin. All right. All right. He's a decent choice. And we got a foil board the weather and a goblin chain whirler. Bam. That's pretty red heavy, though. If I'm, I'd have to be playing straight red for that to work. All right, final pack. Final pack. Final legendary creature option being added into the mix is going to be a Whisper Blood Liturgist. Now, this could be an interesting one to build around for sure. And the rare for that... Oh, wait! We have a surprise! We've got a foil rare, and it's a legendary creature coming in to bring another sexy option. Aerial. Knight of Wind Grace. Ooh, and you would work well with that um, that uh, token doubler. What the hell is it called? The name is eluding me right now. Anointed Procession. There you go. You'd go sexy with Anointed Procession. Excellent option. And what else is in this pack? A uh, Hinterland Harbor. Well, the Dominaria finishing off with a nice strong pack. All right. So that is every single pack. All right. Let's go through all the options that we got. Because I'm realizing there's too many choices now. And instead of narrowing it down and choosing the one that I'm going to go with, I'm going to show you them all. And in the next the next installment, we'll go through the options that come along with these and choose the, choose the best ones here. So I've got the Foil Aerial Knight of Wind Grace. I've got Whisper Blood Liturgist. I've got Raph Capuchin, Ship's Mage. I've got Traxo Scourge of Krug. Tiana, Ship's Caretaker. Grun, the Lonely King. 
All right, we've got Slimefoot the Stowaway, Nicol Bolas the God Pharaoh. We've got the Scorpion God Foyo. We've got Bantu the Glorified. We've got Temet Vizier of Nut and Common. We've got Samet Voice of Descent, Maverin Fane the Dusk Apostle, Jace Cunning Castaway, and Zatalpa Primal Dawn. All right, now let me see. If I can, let's see how many are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, you know what? There's a whole range of different abilities here. And depending on what's kicking around, I mean, it's it's actually kind of hard right now to narrow it down. Um, if I had to pick the ones just off the top that seem, that excite, like I'm going to pick, I'll pick the five that excite me the most right now out of the options just without like, Without really getting into it too deeply and sitting there and weighing them all against each other. I guess actually it's going to be the top six because I put six on this pile. So the top six most exciting options to me currently are Zatalpa Primal Dawn, because who doesn't love a gigantic creature with retarded abilities? Nicol Bolas, just because ah, it's Nicol Bolas and he's a big ridiculous planeswalker. Bantu the Glorified, but he's probably not going to end up making it because of the restriction to actually get him going is going to be hard. The Scorpion God... Because, I mean, come on now. The Scorpion God's amazing, and he keeps coming back. He's a real problem. Grun the Lonely King, because I love gigantic, big, fat green creatures, and he's a lot of fun. And Ariel Knight of Windgrace. So those are my most likely candidates. So that's the concept for the Brawl Battle Box, at least the opening and determining what you're going to use. I mean, obviously, you open it any way you want and decide. But I think what we'll do is we'll do the rest of it most likely in like a live stream format where we can just sit down, take some time, go through, see what's available. I'm going to keep this card pool separate so that I can use it for this purpose because I genuinely enjoy this concept. And so we'll figure out who's going to win out of these guys as the as the commander or will it be a surprise upset from one of these guys based on what's in that big pile of card? Because in the end, there's all, there's all, we've only seen a few of these and there's well over 300 cards to go through to see what other options and abilities that we have to combine with. So... Thanks for coming by, my friends. Let me know what you think of this concept and what you think of Brawl. I'm definitely going to be delving more into it. And I will see you guys later. Look at this spirit token. Look at this kid's eyes. Look how dead his eyes are. Look how dead... Oh, wait. That's awkward. Let's just forget about that. You're probably wondering how I'm holding my camera without any hands. Well, let's just say there's a reason the ladies call me Tripod. Ka chow And remember, together we are the sixth color of magic.